Well, Evelyn, I finally made it. Let me get uh, things organized here. One, two, yes, we're recording. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm going to stop talking for a bit so I can make Okay, I'm back. I had to make sure that we were set up correctly. And let's see. Let's pull up the class modules. I was at a school today doing a K-tip, and uh, the TARC-3 was very late in picking me up and getting me back here. Let's see. Let's pull up Schoology. We'll log in there, and let's pull up classroom. And there we are there. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And before I forget, let's turn on the recording. Well, we already are. Good. Well, so I've been sitting here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So what I want to do today is basically do a comparison between the two uh, tools that we can use for our final for this class. I'm going to pull up one more thing here so we can have it also at hand. So you let give me just a second here. I'm going to pull up the uh, the quality matters. Let's use this one. Yep, that's the one that we've been using in class. And I want to sort of go through each one of these and take a look then at how it looks uh, in each one of the different online presences. One of the things I want to stress, and I mentioned this, I think, a little bit the last time, the idea of an online class can be delivered through something called an LMS, Learning Management System. This is an example of an LMS, Blackboard. Uh, Canvas is another. Moodle is another. A content management system is basically a system that's used to just organize materials. It doesn't have the capabilities of having outside resources made available to the instructor like an LMS can. Um, one of the things that we have to realize is that when we're looking at a tool like Schoology, Schoology kind of straddles the, the line between the two ideas of an LMS and a CMS. Um, it is an LMS in the sense that it has outside tools that you can bring into it. It has the ability to have multiple courses created within it. A CMS is pretty much a standalone um, presence that just does one thing. It manages the content for either a class or a course. Um, a really good example of, of a CMS is uh, Google Classroom. 
So it's not that because it isn't an LMS that it's bad. We just have to realize what its limitations are. And by the way, one of the things that I learned after last week's rather poorly done demonstration of it, I found out that Google Classroom does not allow you to do embeddable material into it. Now, I think that's a, uh, a real deficit on its part. Because one of the things that I really love about Schoology and Edmodo, even though Edmodo is just like uh, Google Classroom, they're both CMSs, but in Edmodo I can actually put in things uh, that are have uh, embed code, and therefore then whatever it is that I'm using becomes available to the students within my uh, system. I don't leave it to go somewhere else to do it. Now, Google will let you put links in. So like if you created a GoAnimate that you wanted to put into your Google Classroom as a way of uh, illuminating what you're teaching, it'll let you put the link in. What it won't do is it won't let you put in the embed code. So you have to follow the link out. You have to teach kids how to go back from the GoAnimate back to the, uh, the Google Classroom. I find that a little clunky. I think it's, yeah, clunky is the right word. But let's look at these two and compare them under the lens of a QM. So if I go to a Schoology course and I can go to my courses, and let's find the one that we were using last time. Here it is, Steve Swan's Schoology 101. In here, the organization is such that you have everything at hand right over here. Your materials become the storage closet where you keep everything. Now, you can put more things in that, as you can see from here. You have all of your information nicely organized within this materials. You can change the look of each folder that represents your materials. You can add materials through the add materials area. And in here, what you see is some really, really nice ability to uh, have multiple ways of representing your course. I can do an assignment. I can do a test quiz. I can do a link to an external tool. This is probably what makes Schoology an LMS more than anything else. I can add a discussion form. I can add a page. And that page is my way of, of putting information in front of kids. Uh, I can put a media album. Uh, a package is web content. So if I wanted to put web content into here, in other words, a, a website that I want to not go out of my Schoology to get to, but actually be in the Schoology, I can do that. It's very nice that way. Import from resources. Now this one I kind of stay away from, mainly because, as you can see down here, you have these apps. Uh, Schoology has in my opinion, has kind of wandered over into uh, a little bit of being greedy. They try to make money off of you. And as you can see, the only apps that I have associated with my Schoology is a YouTube app and a Dropbox app. The Dropbox app is my Dropbox. Um, and I do this because I want to keep down the clutter. And of course, the YouTube allows me to search for videos here inside of my Schoology to then put into my courses. I don't have to do the whole embed thing. I can just literally go and find it and put it in. As you can see, that's what I did here. So I have an introduction. Let's go over to the QM real fast. Instructors make clear how to get started and where to find various course assignments. So when I look at that inside of a Schoology, and I go into a folder called Course Introduction, this is where I can put things 
very simply that I want to have my students understand. I can, by the way, remember this was our, our um, idea garden that we put in. Isn't it? I, I love this thing. It's so easy to do. I could put in a page here that would be where I could write about uh, how this course is going to be and what we're looking for. Simple, simple, simple stuff to do. Remember your breadcrumbs that take you back. If we look at standard number two, the course learning objectives, we go back to our course. There they are. And then here's our assignments. And then the, the other parts that we're looking for here, assessment. Well, assessment's very easy to create inside of a Schoology. Here is an, an assignment that we created. We could have done something as simple as creating a test and a quiz. And I could have put this in here, called it Schoology Test. I need to have categories. Sorry about that. Here we go. Now I have a test, and I can add in the questions that I want to put into here. Let's jump back. When it says assessment, assessment measures the stated learning objectives, or we know all this. This is just good, good teaching practice. There's nothing fancy here. What is different is this up here. All of this is how you go about setting up your class so that people can understand what they're doing here. And I would literally, you could do it one of two ways. I would start with just creating a paragraph that states, hello, I'm your teacher, uh, and these are going to be the rules of the road for how we're going to work in our class. Then I would number them out. You could literally take this and copy it and put it in. And as you answer under each one of them, just take out the words so that what you have created then becomes the focus. Learning objectives, we know how to get those. You know, we're putting those in. Let kids know what it is that we're looking for. As simple as that. Assessment and measurement. Measure for what they've learned. Again, stuff we know. Now, when we get down here to, to the uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we start looking into stuff that looks more about what we can do in a web-enabled environment. We can look at materials from all over the place. You know, the simple idea would be maybe some YouTube videos that would uh, demonstrate what we're trying to learn. It might be in assignment where we ask kids to go to the PictoChart site and create an infographic to put in. It might be allowing kids to go to the GoAnimate site, creating a GoAnimate video. Now, when you do that, you have the ability to control when they get posted. So that's why I like it a lot. I like using GoAnimate not only just because it's really, really engaging for kids, but it gives you all the control over what you do with the creation pieces. So we have lots of resources to do that one. Uh, course activities and learner interaction. Now, this is where, in fact, all of this really, starting from four to five, is where we can start in seven. This is where we can start seeing our knowledge building principles at play with the idea that we give kids a way to talk within the course as opposed to just turning stuff in. I think one of the things that you see a lot of schools that use Edmodo do with it, do with it, it's a homework center. Here's your homework, turn it in. The power of Schoology is that we can have a very robust, and let's go back and look at that, we can have a very robust ability to have a 
built-in discussion forum uh, that everyone can see and that everyone can contribute to. And then everyone can contribute to one of the posts. And it's a very simple thing to set up. And what I like about it is, is that it can be embedded within the exact assignment folder that we need it to be. In other words, we wouldn't put a discussion up here at the top level. That that just wouldn't, it would be, where is it, where is it? What we want to do is put it where the kids are going. So when you think about your knowledge building principles, what we're doing is, is we're giving kids an opportunity to put forth their ideas. And when we do that then, then we get them to buy into what we're doing. When we get them to buy into what they're doing, what we then want to have happen is for that civil discourse that we talked about, knowledge building principles, where kids talk about each other's ideas, not about the quality of the work necessarily, but the ideas behind the work. That's a good idea. Can we talk about it some more to see if we can make it a better idea? In the principles, what you're seeing is, is you're trying to get kids to take ownership of their learning. In a tool like Schoology, what I see is you have the flexibility to make that work. Now, when we look at classes, here's the thing about classes. If you look up here at the very top, you see basically three uh, areas. You see stream, students, and about. Now, stream is like a course, but it isn't. <laughs> Um, a stream is more like um, what you would see in a Facebook. And so you're not able, this is one rolling assignment going down. And so there's no organizational ability here except to make another stream. And as you can see over here, the topics that I have put in here, I can change them, but I can't do anything with them. See what I'm saying? I can't change their order. Now, I would have, frankly, a hard time. Let's go back and take a look. So how would we do... QEM1 in a Google Classroom. Well, my friends who use this would say, well, Steve, you're leaving out the plus sign altogether over here. All righty, let's go over to the plus. And in the plus, I can create a question, create an assignment, create an announcement. Okay. So as you can see, I did that under the topics, and I created a introduction. I also then created an assignment. And then I created another uh, post. No, not post. What do they call it? They call it an announcement. I created another announcement called objectives. So you see, I, I am not really comfortable with the way this structure works. Let's try again. So let's do an announcement. And I do a post. Okay? So it's up here at the top. I can't do anything else with it except to come in here and add a comment. And this is where I can start writing. What do you notice about it, though?
I do have lots of room here to type in. Okay? So I can create an announcement that can meet the needs of number one in the QM. Now let's, let's jump over to the learning objectives. So once again, I can go back to my plus sign and I can create an announcement. And I can call that objectives. And I can post it. Do you see what just happened? Now, the only way that you can move things around is you come over here to the three little dots and you go move to top. So now, that's how I can organize myself. But it's going to be a game of, of hopscotch from here on out. Unless I really am, uh, have the ability to think, okay, I want this one, then this one, this one. Let me show you what I mean. So that was objectives. Let's go back over here. And let's make another announcement. Goals for the class. I'm going to post that one. We have welcome to our class objectives. You can see what happened. Goals for our class is now on top. I'm going to jump again. Okay. It just gets to me to be difficult to sit and develop um, a consistency to how things work. I can't grab anything and, and move it around. I can do this stuff. You know, I can click this that says move to top. And then, of course, it moves it to the top. And then I've got to go back and do the welcome one again to get it to the top. All I keep doing the same things over and over again when I really should be focused on what it is, the content that I want to put in here. So am I... Am I saying that Google Classroom doesn't really work well with the QM? I think you have to be really careful in your design of it. I think in terms of it being like one stream would represent one lesson. I think it would be difficult here, even though you've got the topics feature over here, and again, if we go back into topics thinking that it would be a place where we could put things, and I type in, let's call this one objectives. I've already got one. Let me just put it in, objectives two. All right. Again, I have no way of organizing this except by my topics. But I have to be extremely careful. Because every time I add a topic, it pushes the first one down. It, it just gets to be almost a nightmare of trying to get things in any kind of order. And that's what drives me nuts about it. Now, what I could do is let's go through here and clean it up. I could go in at the beginning... Let me get rid of this last topic. I could start at the topic level. But let me show you what I mean. So if we go in and add a topic, and we call it intro, and we add, 
if we add another topic and we call it objectives, okay, so we could organize ourselves over here and basically build the pieces that we need that are based upon the QM. And then when we get over here, we can start adding things. So if you want to think of topics, if you want to think of topics as your folders like you had in Schoology, you can get this thing to work. But look at the problem. Look at the problem. It's in alphabetical order. It's not in the order in which I made it. Now, and I don't see anywhere within here. I'm sure someone who is a Google Classroom Pro might be able to tell me how to organize these topics. But I have not found that answer out there. As I said, I'm not tearing down the Google Classroom. I'm just trying to understand how it would work in a online environment. One of the things it has going for it is, in the public schools anyway, uh, this part of it's already populated. You go into here and you have kids already in, in the thing. Um, let me, well, before I leave this behind, I wanted to show you that um, it will put in by link uh, stuff that you've created. But again, let's see what happens when I click on this GoAnimate link. Okay, so it takes me to it, but I can't get back to where I came from except to either use the back button over here, which it doesn't let me do, or click on a tab. So I guess if you're willing, willing to teach kids how to navigate with tabs, etc., you'd be all right. Let me drop down and let's try another one. Here's a YouTube video. Now, right away, what you notice, I hope, is that up here I have an arrow that says, or that says, uh, what is a Google Classroom? And it takes me right back to where I left off. So as long as something you're trying to use is, with, is, with, is within the Googleverse, it will work with it. It'll, it'll be fine. So that's why YouTube works so nicely with it. But if we wanted to leave the Googleverse and go out to another Web 2.0 resource, it's a little bit more problematic to get back. Okay, let me go back to my QM. So I think we are in agreement that we can see the, how we could do the introduction, learning objectives, assessment. Oh, assessment. Let's go back to assessment. If you look here, it says create a question. That's all I can do. I can create one question. <laughs> And I can then either make it short answer or multiple choice. And that's all I have. And bang, there it goes. So you, I find that, again, a little clumsy, very clumsy, as a matter of fact, whereas I know that when I create over here in Schoology, I can create it, and it's its own separate entity right here, whereas this is like one. 
Now you can see that it gives me this nice little thing over here that says uh, how many got done. Let me try something. Let's let's see what happens if I put in another question. And I have a funny feeling that what I'm going to see is pretty much what we just saw. Okay. And I'll ask that. So what I get is I get this sort of series of, you know, boxes that would represent what's right there. That I could make anything I wanted to. Now, this is, a, in fact, the, the Google trainers that are out there acknowledge this is a problem. And, I'm, you know, that's, that's fair. I think, though, what we've got to realize, again, is in terms of structure, this is a great place to house homework or house assignments and then have kids put them back in because you have the ability Everything is all connected to each other. And by that I mean um, everything is connected to the Google Drive that each kid owns that is also then connected into the classroom. It is the management side of it that makes Google Classroom so attractive to people because it's easy for kids to do things and then put them back in. Um, um, hold on a sec. I have to answer something. Okay. Let's drop down to the other pieces. Again, under five, this is where we really want to see the sort of things that the knowledge building principles talk to us about. Do we have activities where kids create and kids interact with the course materials? Create a infographic using pick to chart. Put it into a post and look at each other's pick the charts infographics and comment on them. Work together to create a new idea about the learning topic. I was in a social studies class today uh, and watched a, a really, really excellent teacher. And so she was asking the simple question, why do we need to learn the ideas around social studies. And at first when I walked in, I was a little bit hesitant for her. Uh, she works in a tough school. Let's just don't sugarcoat it. She works in a tough school. But because she had done such a great job of inundating these kids in multimedia and group work and work that allowed them to think out loud and talk, uh, this is middle school, by the way. She had amazing responses from kids, really good stuff. And I just sat there and I smiled and I said, this is knowledge building that's going on in this classroom right now. The teacher puts out a central idea that doesn't have an exact answer. But the kids then basically build their answer based upon the material that they had been studying. And they were allowed to, because they had been taught to, how to have civil discourse. I like your idea, but I think you're missing this point. It was really nice to see. So course activities and learner interaction is where you really heavily lean on the discussion forum idea. 
giving kids an opportunity to give back feedback around the ideas of the online course. Course technology, the tools used in the course support the learning objectives. You know that this really, what this is about, the, this is about the structure. So does your structure make sense? Does it give kids an easy way to see where things are? Do you have the ability for kids to have places to respond and interact? And then readily obtainable. So in other words, do we have links that take us out to the things that we need to use in the course? You know, like here, where we had the Go Animate for Schools. Go in here, log in, use this, use that, create a Go Animate, put it in your post, and then post it back into the, the school, into the class. Again, I have a problem with this because it is difficult. No, not all that. Uh, yes, it is difficult for kids to navigate this space after it gets so big. Learner support, number seven. This goes back to your introduction. This is basically having kids realize what it is that we're doing so that they understand what the understandings that they're going to create are all about. And then number eight, this is a biggie. Is your navigation system easy to get around in? Does your multimedia easy to use? Does it provide alternate means of access to course materials in formats that meet the needs of diverse learners? Hmm. That's a toughie. Google Classroom wins, hands down, on that one. I'll tell you why. Most of the time you see Google Classroom, it's done using a Chrome browser. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a Chrome browser right now. And the Chrome browser wins hands down when it comes to the uh, ability to provide like reading or predictive text or uh, being able to enlarge the test text. So I will give that one to the Google Classroom. Now, if you're in a Chrome browser, you can still do the same things over here in Schoology. But it's literally built, it is baked in to Classroom. So it wins that one easily. Course navigation. I just keep coming back to this over and over again. The way this is set up versus the way this is set up. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there, unless you have questions, because what I want to do for the next time, and by the way, let me check my calendar real fast and see what next Thursday is going to look like. I will be, yeah, next Thursday. I will be on campus next Thursday teaching um, three classes in the morning. And so I will be there in the afternoon for our class online. What I want to do next week is literally go through the final and show you how to do it step by step. Um, I think I said last week in passing that I think it would probably be best if you downloaded the Word document that is in the final, fill it out, and upload, as opposed to trying to fill it in online in the live text. The live text doesn't seem to play nice with the table format that uh, I use to create it. The thing I'm going to need to stress to everyone is I have to have access to your course. In Schoology, that code is right there. 
in the Google Classroom, you give access to it through a share. And I think it's under settings. Yeah, you create an invitation to join classes as a student. So I have that turned on. So I can do that. Right here. There's my class code. So make sure you have that turned on. Well, I'll go over this next week. And that way, then, I can get into your class. OK? And that'll be it. Oh my goodness, are you saying that 587 would be done next week? Yeah. You'd be done with the class. Now, when do you have to turn all this in? Well, I can't really do anything with the live text until you put it in there, number one. And number two, though, I really can't post any grades until the registrar turns it loose. And that usually doesn't happen until around Thanksgiving. So you have an enormous amount of time to get this done. Remember, please, please remember the assignment. Students will each develop a course with one lesson with their own Schoology space. Same thing with a Google Classroom. One lesson. This should not be onerous. But I want you to be able to step back and argue with me about is the rubric, the QM rubric, and how well your course meets that. And as I said, we'll do all that next week. We'll make sure that we dot all those I's, cross all those T's. OK. I'm going to stop. I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> and uh, I've been fighting a bronchial thing all weekend. So I hope to see you next Thursday, where we will wrap up this class. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, you know how to reach me. Text is the best, best way, 502-457-2937. I also want to stress that if you want to come into the office and sit with me in front of the big screen and literally look at all this together, you can certainly make an appointment and come in, and we, I will gladly do that with you. I do not play a gotcha game. I play a learning game. I want you to understand how all this works and to build something that you can be proud of, and more importantly, use it as an independent study in practice in your own classroom. Okay, talk to you next week. Bye now.